My name's Alan. And my name is Rory. Today, we're going to be taking you on an in-depth trip into what this beautiful region Australia has to offer. I will be taking you into the wildest part of its rainforests to show you how the environment is coping with the struggling need for industrialisation and how natural hazards are affecting the environment in which they are causing damage to. Whereas I will be showing you how the increasing numbers of population and tourism are affecting the well-being of the economy and the people who live there. Well, who's going to go first? I guess you're going first. Do I, do I just jump? Yeah, it'll be alright. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Good luck, by the way. Cheers. Oh gosh. It does nothing. Ooh. Oh, that was fun. Anyway, I know you're looking around thinking what all this stuff is. Haven't you ever seen flowers before? 80% of the flowers in the Australian rainforest aren't found anywhere else in the world, you know. Well, wow. pretty interesting. Australia's tropical rainforests cover approximately 900,000 square hectares and are internationally recognised as being one of the most ecologically fascinating natural areas in the world as one of the few remaining truly pristine tropical rainforest places on the planet. These forests contain an amazing array and diversity of flora and fauna. Stretching for over 500 kilometres along tropical North Queensland's coastline, these rainforests are the oldest, most continually surviving rainforests on Earth and once covered the entire Australian continent. <sighs> Quite a shame deforestation has to get in the way. Mainly, this is due to the vast comple complexity of Australia's industrialisation process or agricultural and logging campaigns. But mostly, it's due to the increase in tourism. Oh, which reminds me. Australia is very well known for its coral reefs, more famously known as the Great Barrier Reef, which in turn can also attract many tourists and visitors from all around the world. And don't worry, I can't really breathe on the water. Ah, it's better. The Great Barrier Reef is home to around 30 species of whales, dolphins and porpoises, over 200 species of bird, 6 breeding species of sea turtle, 14 species of sea snake, and over 1,500 species of fish. What is more, saltwater crocodiles live in mangrove and salt marshes on the coast near the reef. Whoa, okay, hey. Whoa, calm down, come. Stop, stop. Better. But there can be threats to the reef as well, like coral bleaching, tourists, overfishing, oil spills, shipping accidents, water quality, and overall temperature. So, tourism. It may be a bit more than you might think. The value of the tourism output of Australia's Coral Coast in 2007 to 2008 was 512 million. This was 6.9% of the overall output, making it the 15th most tourist dependent place in Australia. You could say tourism is the lifeblood of many regional areas. It creates jobs where people live and is a source of employment in Australia's coral coast for many people, including hospitality professionals, university students, travellers, and older Australians looking for part-time employment. Although tourism may have its advantages for the economy and raise good profit for the people who work there, if not careful, we could pollute landmarks like the Great Barrier Reef due to the large number of people who do not take care of the environment. Actions that cause things like coral bleaching are disposing of chemical waste down the drain, spilling oil into the waters when refueling boats or engines, and not disposing of waste appropriately. You get landmark attractions such as the Great Barrier Reef, Sydney, the Great Ocean Road, the Blue Mountains, 
Fraser Island and more. You also get attractions in terms of rare and wonderful animals, such as the koala, kangaroo, emu, cassowary, platypus, dolphin, stingray, Tasmanian devil and wombat, all of which can be found in Australia. Hmm. I wonder how Ali's getting on in his scenario. Natural hazards such as droughts, heat waves, bushfires, landslides, cyclones, and earthquakes are all events which can take place in Australia. cycle of weather patterns in Australia, as well as being affected by human factors such as overstocking, vegetation loss, dams, and groundwater and irrigation schemes. For example, floods. Floods occur when water covers land which is normally dry. Floods in Australia range from localised flash flooding as a result of thunderstorms to more widespread flooding following heavy rain over the catchment areas of river systems. Flooding is also a regular seasonal phenomenon in Northern Australia. Heat waves. A heat wave is a prolonged period of excessive heat, which results from a certain combination of temperature, humidity, air movement and duration. Heat waves are the most underrated of the natural disasters, as the bushfires that accompany many heat waves tend to get most of the attention, and in Australia they have caused the greatest loss of life in, on any natural hazard, except disease. Now for bushfires. Australian bushfires can be particularly severe, as eucalyptus trees contain large amounts of oil which can burn very, very fast and very hot. Other human management factors which have contributed to the severity of bushfires include high fuel loads, landslides, landslides regularly impact localised areas such as buildings and transport and communications infrastructure across Australia. They pose a serious threat to people and property, particularly when they occur suddenly and without any warning. Common types of landslides include rockfalls, debris flows and deep-seated landslides. Landslides in Australia are predominantly triggered by an increase in poor water pressure from intense short duration or prolonged rainfall, with about half being influenced by human activity. As Australia's population and living density continues to grow, so does the potential impact of a natural disaster on the Australian community. Increasing numbers of people, buildings and infrastructure assets are being exposed to natural hazards as the pressures for urban development extend into hazardous areas. Australia's population has arisen by around 12 million since 1960 to 2010 and Australia is the 52nd most populous country in the world. Its population is concentrated mainly in the urban areas and is expected to exceed 28 million by 2030. Australia has scarcely more than two persons per square kilometre of total land area, with 89% of its population living in urban areas. Australia is one of the world's most urbanised countries. The life expectancy of an average Australian in 1999 to 2001 was 79.7 .7 years, among the highest in the world. So, does that round that up then? Yeah, and I suppose that part of the reason why Australia is home to many tourists and visitors is because it just has lots to offer, doesn't it? I think we can both agree on that. You're right. 
and from the tropical rainforests to the Great Barrier Reef and the amazing locations and tourist hotspots such as the Great Ocean Road and the Fraser Island, I think we can both agree that it doesn't fail to impress. Whoa! Oh, and did I forget to mention that Australia is home to one of the most venomous snakes in the world? Uh, Ali, did you say venomous? Ali? Ali? Whoa!